There's a lot of choices that you can make when building a computer. The biggest one's going to be, do you go with Intel or do you go with AMD? Team Blue or Team Red? The choice is simple, but also difficult. Before I get on, don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, link is down below to the merch store. Go get some great merch. The platform you should go with is Intel, but maybe it's AMD. The reason this is difficult is because honestly, both right now at the time of filming, and this is after Gen 13 for um, Intel has been released. So of course, I seven the Ryzen 7's out as well. Um, both of these being out, it's still difficult for me to honestly say which one you should do because both have their own problems and both are amazing, amazing gains in performance. We're gonna start with Intel just because Intel honestly is fresh in your mind with the, in the um, i13 release as well as Intel of the two being the one that's been on top for the beginning for longer. Well. Not longer. Those of you with longer memories remember that AMD used to be on top and Intel very quickly got back on top after that. It's kind of like this thing where you see them just kind of go back and forth. That's what happens when you have a competitive market. And it is awesome when right now both of them are really close. So right now, Intel Gen 13 has as much performance as the Ryzen 7000. However, it is DDR4 and DDR5 compatible, which means you can get cheaper RAM, you get cheaper RAM with DDR4, but to get the full performance, you're gonna need to get DDR5. You do get similar or and a little less performance with DDR4, but DDR5, from what I can tell, and it honestly hasn't been fully tested by most people, <laughs> DDR5 seems to be where you get most of your performance gains with i3 the um, Intel 13th gen, even though it is a gen above the i12s. Now, that is to say that the gen 13 Intels didn't beat everything. Actually, the Ryzen 5000 um, X3D, whatever CPU that was, I can't remember. I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> 5800 X3D, the Ryzen 7 5800 X3D, this CPU actually beat a lot of Ryzen 7000 and a lot of Intel Gen 13 and 12. It was a massacre on a lot of things, but not everything. There were some things that Ryzen 7 5800X3D did not do as well in Intel's compared to Intel Gen 13, but that's not the biggest thing right now. The thing is, it's cheaper and that's a thing because if you go with AMD, you have to get a new motherboard you have to get new RAM, that is DDR5. AMD is only doing DDR5, is not doing a gen DDR4 or DDR5, you can only do DDR5. Um, you can use the same cooler um, because it is AM4 and AM5, uh, is AM4 compatible with most of the motherboards, I believe, um, but not all of the CPU coolers are compatible with the new um, AM4 slash AM5 uh, mounting. Um, Jay's Two Cents did a video on this a little bit ago. Uh, I, I would say go watch that because honestly, I don't think there's a list yet on which coolers are compatible and I don't think anybody has every cooler in existence. Now that was a lot uh, for Intel. And it's still not everything. I can't get everything in the video, mostly because I don't have my own Intel um, Gen 13 CPU laying around to do benchmarks on. Um, I can show you, hopefully, the benchmarks um, in this side, or maybe just in front of me. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes which way to point on this camera, because it's always the other way. Because this is my right side, and it looks like my left on the screen, because I have it in front of me. <laughs> Ryzen 7, though, does have some growing pains. Eh, Ryzen 7000 series. 
it's on a new LGA socket, thus meaning you need the new motherboard. AM5 mounting, which we haven't gotten any AM5 coolers yet. Uh, I think everybody is rushing right now to get those and make those specifically. Which I don't know if anybody's released any yet. I haven't seen anything. Um, I'm hoping there's something out soon because this is going to be really, really big. Um, that's because Ryzen 7000 runs hot. <laughs> 95 degrees Celsius, which is 203 degrees Fahrenheit, is what these things run at. Now, AMD has said that this is perfectly fine and is normal. Your CPU will not boil. However, that doesn't mean we don't want it cooler. Now, it seems to everybody that has watched reviews for the um, Ryzen 7000 series that they actually made the plate a little thicker than they normally would to make sure they could reach that AM4 or AM5 compatibility. This means there's not a really good amount of contact to where the direct die is, and it's trying to transfer all that heat out, but it's meeting all that resistance between the heatsink and of the actual CPU and the heatsink of the CPU cooler. I wonder if that's why they did that really cool shape to help with cooling. Oh, that's gotta be it. Because I think you can actually see into the chip. Oh yeah, that's gotta be it. Because they actually have some chip things kind of visible. Um, I kind of wish somebody gives me a little of a plainer view of this. But that has to be it. It has to help with cooling. So if they had gone with a normal looking chip design... I have a feeling that thing would have been even hotter and we would have been having problems. That does make me worried that I wouldn't want to get thermal goop all over those um, tasty, tasty little uh, nodes there. I think that's what those are. Not positive. But it is nice to see that they did think of that. Now, there has been a bunch of people trying to fix these problems. Debauer has made a remapping tool, um, which is a way to um, thin down the plate on the CPU to give it better um, capability of throwing out that heat. Um, you need a cooler that can actually like press down on that though. So you're gonna need to figure out a new mounting thing. Uh, Jay's Two Cents, again, did a video on this. So go watch that. He actually remapped a CPU and figured a way on how to get good connectivity. It didn't have that big of a difference, but he didn't take off that much to be honest. He could have taken off a lot more and been fine. Um, and another way would be de-litting it. And Debauer actually did a video on that the first day this thing came out. Um, it was insane. It went from 95 to I almost want to say it was like 50 degrees. It was like 40 or 30 degrees in difference by de-litting it and also using um, Thermal Grizzly Thermal Paste. Uh, so that liquid metal thermal paste. Which funny thing is, is uh, Jay's Two Cents also used that thermal paste. I wonder if that metal thermal paste is just really good for Ryzen 7000 series. In which case, everybody needs to get that thermal paste. You're just going to have to get over the fact it's liquid metal and it gets everywhere. You're just going to have to be really, really careful. So honestly, with both, there are growing pains, as we've discussed. I would say at the moment... Ryzen's is a little bit more. I love AMD. I do. I love Intel. I love AMD. I love Nvidia. I have a hard time recommending AMD to anybody for 7000 done when it comes down to the temps the CPU is going to be running at. Because oh my lord, the price you're going to have to deal with with the motherboards, which I think are just the high end motherboards only came out right now. Yeah, but they did lower them after their original price release. Those were huge. Um, <laughs> and then the fact that how many parts you have to buy new. The CPU, motherboard, RAM, like I've said. But <laughs> that's a lot for a new computer. Um, you generally want to try and carry over as many parts as you can. The PSU will almost always go over graphics card most likely unless you want to get the new Nvidia cards maybe your cooler we're not sure it depends if it works with AM 
with that one. Because again, not all of the AM4 coolers worked with the AM5 slash AM4 bracket. So once again, you'd need to figure out if it's compatible or not. I think mine would be fine, this um, Asus one, because it has that uh, turning bit that you can put on there, but I'm not positive. I have to watch the video again. <laughs> Intel is, oddly enough, the cheaper of the two. You can go with a DDR4 RAM motherboard, which automatically cuts a lot of cost. They already have the new coolers out, because that came with Gen 12, so you're using that same cooler. Pretty sure you're still using the same motherboard, or could. Am I right? It's been a while. Yeah, you can use the 590s. Um, so the 12 gen ones, so you can use the same ones. So CPU, RAM, motherboard, you can all get reused, which also means your power slide can be used, your graphics card can get reused. You're using the same system, more or less. You're just replacing the CPU. That is a significantly cheaper process and honestly a lot less stressful because just of the price difference and all of that, I, I feel really bad because I love my AMD CPU. If I had to recommend a new CPU right now and they really wanted to go either Ryzen 7000 or Gen 13, I'd have to go Gen 13. However, I would try to talk them out of that. I would try to talk them into getting a previous gen. It would be cheaper. There would be more used parts on the market, which is significantly cheaper. Um, and even though we are switching from DDR to DDR5, DDR4 to DDR5, um, DDR5 is expensive, A, and B, not everybody needs that performance gain right, right now. So sticking with DDR4 a couple more years is not a horrible thing. And honestly, if you're a gamer, you, you know this already, especially if you've watched any of my videos from before on PC Basics, by the way, I do have a playlist of that if you want to go take a look through those. Totally not cringeworthy on any of them. That, in the end, it's price to performance. While you will get a significant price gain and performance gain, you have to think about it in terms of when to do the upgrades. If you have a Intel 12th gen, Intel 11, I would say stay with them. They're fine. If you have Ryzen 5000, Ryzen 3000, you're fine. You're fine. I'd say if any of you guys still have Athlon CPUs, I'd say maybe you should switch to a Ryzen 3000 series soon. Because <laughs> Athlon was a while ago, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Released in 1999. Yeah, if you're still running on that, please switch. <laughs> I'd be okay with you going Intel or AMD at that point. <laughs> you will get a significant, significant performance gain going from an Athlon to a Ryzen or an Intel 10 or above in Gen. So in the end, at the moment, at the time of reviewing this, Intel is the cheaper CPU slash platform to go with right now for upgrading. However, we need to give it time. This is Intel's second Gen on this new motherboard. Um, this is AMD's first gen on this new motherboard with this new socket, with this new DDR5 RAM. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. I really, really hope that at some point we can all, AMD and Intel lovers can just get along and agree both of these companies are trying to suck us of all of our life and money. Hope you guys enjoyed this video again. Don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Also, link is down below to the merch store. Go get some great merch. If you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you guys go check out the video where I actually switched to Asus for my personal rig. It was a fun video, and quite honestly, it's just again another video where I went with my AMD processor and incredibly love it. Editing these videos with it makes everything in my life so much easier. <laughs> Thank you guys again for tuning in. Have a good day.